Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Claire Tempany, and it's my pleasure to present to you today a brief overview of PIRAD standardization, risk assessment, recent advances, and future plans. Some disclosures, several sources of NIH funding help me in my research, and I work as a med advisory board for two companies and clinical trials as described. I think most everybody now is familiar with what goes into making the state-of-the-art prostate MRI examination. Three pulse sequences, diffusion, T2, IV contrast, uh, the dynamic contrast in the T2. These are images showing us the normal appearance of the prostate on T2-weighted images. Again, probably familiar to most of this audience. The subdivisions of the prostate are beautifully outlined on T2 images, showing us the peripheral zone in high signal T2 signal here, and then the center and transition zone in the middle with varying shapes and forms of BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, with stromal bands of tissue between the glandular tissue. Uh, the glandular tissue can calcify, so we can get areas of black low signal, or it can break down and become cystic fluid, as is seen here in these areas of high signal intensity. BPH, it's important to understand its appearance so we can actually detect cancer. The role of prostate MRI continues to expand. Uh, primarily, it's focused on detection, characterization, targeting, identifying targets for biopsy, staging patients with known uh, or suspected cancer, and then monitoring all forms of therapy, be they no therapy as in active surveillance or other forms of therapy such as focal therapy, where we're very concerned to monitor the remaining prostate. When we speak about PIRADS, we're really going to really zone in on these two areas right here, these two clinical 